All right, well, the TV writer David Slack joins me now. He most recently wrote for Magnum PI and has worked on many other shows, including Law and Order and Person of Interest. Great to have you on. Such an honor to meet you. Um, it's great to see someone nice behind the scenes of the shows that I absolutely adore. Uh, look, here's the thing. Um, you know, these negotia negotiations beha happen behind closed doors. And it's absolutely vital in understanding the dynamics um, when you go to uh, the studios and say what you, your needs are. Why did the negotiation and the talks break down to the point where you had to go on strike? Well, we put out, the Writers Guild of America put out last night a side-by-side -side comparison of our asks versus the studio's proposals. And on many of our major issues, they failed to counter to our offers at all. Uh, or our demands at all. So when they're not negotiating on the major points that are important to writers, there's not much to talk about, which I guess is why they chose to disengage and force us to go on strike. Um, look, the streaming issue is, is quite an important one. We heard from our reporter there um, that this has actually, you know, changed the way that contracts are formulated. Um, it's changed the, the time frame of contracts. Has the streaming services been a negative uh, for the experience of writers? I mean, it's it's a mixed bag because there's obviously been an explosion in content. There are a lot of people who have got their first job in streaming, have only worked in streaming. As far as compensation goes, the industry as a whole is grinding us down. Writers' pay has fallen to 4% over the incredibly prosperous decade of peak TV. And when you adjust for inflation, that's down 23%. Um, in 10 years ago, a third of TV series writers were working at minimums. Now that number's up to half. So we're not, we're a middle class union. Uh, there's a sort of an image of uh, Hollywood writers as, you know, living a sort of glamorous lifestyle. We are people who are worried about paying our rent, paying our bills, raising our kids, having a family, buying a home, and having something left over for retirement. Um, and that's true not just of us, that's true of actors and directors and crew members. This is a middle class industry. And the way that things are unfolding on a compensation front as we move into an increasingly streaming driven industry, that's not working for writers. I don't think it's working for any of us, except for possibly the CEOs of these corporations. And, you know, I, I was looking at the freelance landscape as well, which clearly has gained massive momentum. Look, the gig economy is an interesting one. It gives people opportunities, but it also opens the door for major exploitation. Um, how has this trend affected you? Uh, I think that we're in a moment where we have companies like Netflix and Amazon and Apple coming in with a tech mindset uh, where there is a desire, perhaps on their part, uh, to push us into a more freelance gig-based model. Uh, we are the people who make a product that is incredibly, incredibly lucrative. The studios made industry revenues top 220 billion last year. Uh, they've made 30 billion in pure profit every year since 2017. They've got plenty of money that they make off of a product that we are the people who know how to make. So we're not necessarily in a situation where you can just plug one of us in or swap in you know, workers from anywhere. This is a very specialized trade and it takes a long time to learn and it's really rare to be talented at it. So that has value. And all we're asking is the value that our work is worth to participate in the booming industry that we are all a part of and that we all love. Look, the AI revolution is, um, I think, becoming a lot more intense and aggressive. It's, it's making everyone think very deeply about their role. Uh, how are you thinking about this? How's the Guild thinking about what AI could mean for your future? AI is a complicated issue. Our contract for generations has said that the writer of a script has to be a person. Um, so we hold to that. Uh, artificial intelligence, as it's presently constituted, as it presently exists, uh, is a massive copyright problem, and that's something that uh, the studios would have to sort out. Those AIs, if they train them off of our scripts, who gets credit for that? Uh, so it's it's a thorny problem. It's a complicated one, and I think the evidence is there that the technology is not there right now. I I think AI will probably you know replace high up executives at companies long before it replaces Hollywood writers. I 
I don't think there's an AI yet that knows how to make your heart soar and knows how to make you cry, knows how to draw you into a, an unfolding story that takes you places nowhere you ever thought you'd go before. Thank you for reminding us of that, right? Um, only people like you can, can make us feel that way. Look, 2007, we had 100 days of strike action. I think the industry felt it very intensely. What is your prognosis of how long this is going to take to find some oh, kind I'm, of middle ground? I, I wouldn't want to speculate about that. It's going to take as long as it takes to get a fair deal with the studios. They could have made a fair deal with us last night. That would have been the smart thing for them to do. Instead, they've chosen a course that's going to cost them billions, and they're still going to wind up making a deal with us. We were out for 100 days in 2007, and we stopped when we got what we wanted, which was coverage over streaming. Had we not gone on strike then, all those streaming shows would be non-union, not just for writers, but for directors, actors, and crew. So we'll do this for as long as it takes to get what we want. Uh, and what we need in order for writing to be a sustainable profession rather than just an elaborate hobby. David Slack, great to have you on. Thank you so much for your time.